teacher's voice. As voices of professors. As voices of the teachers. La voix des enseignants. Bien, 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 bien. Hey, hey, hey. Teachers' voices. 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 Hello and welcome to a special episode of Teachers' Voices. I am your host, Nina Alonso, and today we will be doing something different. I'm here with someone who has been with me from the beginning, supporting me in designing and producing this series behind the scenes. I am excited to welcome Gemma Wirtz, the Editor-in-Chief of Bold. Hi, Nina, and hello to all the listeners of Teachers' Voices. Gemma and I meet frequently to discuss upcoming episodes of Teachers' Voices, what themes we are going to cover, who we could ask to tell us about the latest research and how we can share the incredible stories we've been collecting. I have to say it's one of the highlights of my week to hear what wonderful educators we are featuring next. This week, Nina and I wanted to talk about what Teachers' Voices has achieved so far and some of the feedback we've received. We want to tell you all about what's coming up on the rest of the series, what we've learned so far in this podcast journey, and also ask you to join us by letting us know your thoughts. With World Teachers Day coming up, it's a great moment to pause and reflect once more on why it is so important to listen to teachers' voices and how we can help bring educators, researchers, parents and policymakers together. And I think today's special guest has some great insights into this, right, Nina? Yes. I'll be speaking to Tobias Heiber, Jorge Sen, later about his experience as a teacher and leader of teacher education programs. He leads the Playful Learning Program in Denmark, a nationwide partnership between the Lego Foundation and universities and colleges in Denmark. I can't wait to hear more from Tobias. But first, let's take a minute to reflect on our journey together. Do you realize it's almost a year since you first came to me with your idea for a podcast? Wow, how quickly the time has gone. It really has. But right from the first time I heard your idea for a podcast that brings teachers and researchers together and lets those teachers tell their own powerful stories in their own words, I was hooked and I knew I wanted to help you develop this. What was it about podcasting that you thought would be perfect to elevate teachers' voices? I have always been fascinated by oral traditions and communication as a means of dissemination, culture and education. I believe that teacher stories need to be shared. They deserve the power and intimacy of the voice. Podcasts in particular can create a personal connection, erasing the distance between the host and the listener and creating a space for reflecting and focused thinking. So one of the first things we talked about when we were planning this podcast was what the themes would be running through the series. I've been so inspired listening to teachers talk about their experiences with multilingualism, teaching kids under adverse conditions, and of course, the huge challenges of teaching during the COVID-19 pandemic. I wonder, Nina, when you've been talking to all of these teachers from countries across the world, is there one thing that you think these educators all have in common? That's such a great question. For me, you know, it's extremely interesting and rewarding to see that regardless of the geographical and socioeconomic context, the teachers are all passionate about making learning possible for all their students. And it's clear they all go beyond the subjects they teach and focus on something that is multidisciplinary, which is motivating each individual child to learn and to thrive. And they all do this thinking creatively in an ever evolving way of adapting to the students' needs. That's such a great point. The creativity of these teachers amazes me. There are still a lot of things we want to discuss with researchers and teachers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing about parental engagement. What else have we got coming up? Well, you know, we will soon be talking about the development of reasoning skills and mathematical thinking. And because we know that play is so important for learning, we are releasing an amazing episode on learning through play to celebrate World Teachers Day. I'm really looking forward to hearing about that. Um, as a mum of young, uh, mum myself, I've got young kids. I'm fascinated to hear about the role of play in learning. I'd also love to hear from our listeners whether there are some themes that we should absolutely cover in our upcoming episodes. Yes, please do. Get in touch with suggestions for themes, but also if you know any teachers whose stories should be shared on here, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us on podcastteachersvoices at gmail.com. I repeat, podcastteachersvoices at gmail.com. We'll put the address in the show notes, however.
How have our listeners been letting us know what they think so far? Well, I'm really happy. I'm really happy to have received great feedback from listeners around the world on social media, both on Bolt's Twitter and Facebook, comments on the Bolt website, bolt.expert, and of course by email. Some of these listeners have actually become interviewees because they wanted to tell their stories. This is what happened, for instance, with Rocio from Argentina, who I interviewed about her experience during COVID-19 lockdowns, if you remember well, Gemma. I really think one of the most rewarding things about Teachers' Voices is seeing how keen both teachers and researchers are to share their knowledge. They, of course, make this podcast possible, but they're also helping us spread the word about how important it is to connect with each other and share our stories. We've been so lucky to be supported by experts and researchers and fantastic teachers who have become ambassadors of Teachers' Voices around the world. So true. And speaking of wonderful guests, as we mentioned earlier, we have a special guest today who has experience both as a teacher and as a leader of teacher education programmes. As we think about our next episode on the role of play in learning, I'd really like to hear from Tobias about why play is so important and why it's such an exciting topic in learning right now. Yes, that's exactly what I asked him when we talked earlier. I think that play is important almost as an intrinsic factor in the human learning process. I think that in schools and as teachers, we, um, we sometimes tend to forget that. I guess tradition and culture makes us reproduce and conserve instructionistic and somewhat one-sided framing of learning sometimes. And I think that this makes us kind of shadow the fact that play is learning in itself. In my mind, you can't play without learning. And I guess as teachers, we talk far too often of either play or learning in schools. What happens when the Playful Learning Program works with educators and their professional development towards a more playful learning approach? Can you paint a picture? I can paint one picture. I, I have a, we have a, a lot of educators and teachers in this huge program, but I have a math teacher. Uh, his name is Pia, and he's a very traditional math teacher, and he's highly, highly skilled. I really uh, respect him. And at some point, he watches football, I guess, uh, under the world, with the World Cup, and he watches the Icelandic national team. And maybe some of you remember that you had these fans saying, who? And while they, they shout this from the stands, he suddenly, because he's a math teacher, thinks, is it possible to swim all the way around Iceland? And I guess this weird idea that he told me, it came with him to his classroom the next week. So instead of standing there by the whiteboard and telling the students for hours and hours about math, he asked them, hey guys, is it possible to swim about, around Iceland? And I guess the way he tells it to me is a totally different, much more playful, much more open-ended learning process for these students that work with this question. But it's also math, and it might be even a deeper learning process when it comes to math, at least from Pierce's standpoint, because he approaches the way he teach in a much more playful way. For you, what is the most rewarding on, or interesting outcomes of the experience for children, like the positive consequences of a playful learning for the ultimate receptor, like for children? Teachers need a grid work. They need a community. They need a movement to be part of in order to kind of break the barriers, both structural, traditional or cultural, to make a difference. And that kind of gives me hope. That's very rewarding that that we can make a significant change. It will take time. It definitely will. But we can make a significant change over time. And actually, what you say just yes, resonates with the ultimate goal of this podcast, which is really to create that community of practice. I think it's definitely uh, a, a part of what we need to do. And I think your podcast is very important in that aspect as well. I think we have learned that you cannot tell teachers what to do. You can't give them one recipe, one method, but you can give them a frame. You can give them a frame to develop and reflect and to ask. And this is what I guess you do try to inspire through your podcast and the Playful Learning program is basically with the same vision, I guess. If you're interested in learning through play, don't miss our following episode. You will also enjoy the Playful Learning podcast. 
find links on the show notes. They have interesting episodes on pedagogy of play, lifelong like kindergarten, and play labs and tinkering. You have just listened to a special episode of Teachers' Voices. Please stay tuned. The coming episode is to celebrate World Teachers' Day. Follow us and don't forget to share with your friends and engage with us in conversations through social media and on Bolt.expert. Teachers' Voices.